I want to make something you can feel. Something that stands the test of time. I don't know about you, but I find this beauty in taking ordinary footage that I shot with my friends and turning it into something that feels like it belongs in a movie. Because I think there's this magic that Hollywood films have that move us in ways that most ordinary videos just don't. But how can my footage evoke that same emotion? I don't have big sets or crews or the craziest equipment, but there has to be a way for what I create to be more than just a video thrown into the void. Because I don't want to make videos. I want to make true cinematic films that make people feel something real. And I've always looked for the answer to do that. And if that's an answer you're looking for, you're in the right place. I want to make something you can feel. Something that stands the test of time. So the other day I sat down and I watched the movie The Arrival. And whether or not you've seen it, the end scene in the film is just so insanely beautiful. It's one of those films where I finished watching and I just got full body chills and I knew immediately I wanted to go out there and create something. We are so bound by time, by its order. Now, it was a combination of the voiceover, the music, the shot selection, all of these things in tandem that made this Hollywood film make me feel so just alive. You know, when you're finishing watching a film and you just want to go out and make something. And that's exactly what this film did for me. And it got me thinking because as a filmmaker myself and someone who's also on YouTube and creates for the internet, how can we take our own films that we shoot on the ground and have that same emotion and have that same effect on our audience? We're gonna talk about three things. We're gonna talk about the visual presentation of your film. We're gonna talk about the auditory presentation of your film. And we're gonna talk about the storytelling, the message that you have in your film and how you can package these all together to make something great. This is purely just my mentality going into films and how you can even take footage you've already shot and create something powerful even if you don't feel like it's deserving of a powerful message. And so with that, let's get into it and start with what every film needs, the visual presentation. So obviously when we talk about the visual component, we're gonna have to talk about shot selection. This is the core component of your film and I don't necessarily wanna talk about how to frame things and how to set things up as opposed to the emotion that's coming across in your shots specifically. For me, I'm always trying to highlight the human experience. So shots of silhouettes, shots of people staring into the camera, as cliche as that might be, shots of people laughing and truly feeling like they're living in that moment. For me, that's gonna create a very authentic experience for my viewer. And 99% of the time, I'm not working with models. I'm working with my friends. I'm trying to make my friends look like superheroes. So how can we take all of that and create that emotion within our shot selection. So all the shots you're looking at right now are shots that I've gotten with one camera, with no extra lighting, that I just feel create this certain type of emotion. So you have to be very intentional when it actually comes down to choosing the shots in your film. The next one might seem a little bit obvious, but from taking something that seems like a video and turning it into a film, it is such a core component that I think a lot of people just kind of half-ass, which is the color grade and the aspect ratio and like the packaging of your film itself, right? If you can have incredibly framed shots, but if they just look a little off and they don't match the mood and the tone that you're going for, everything's gonna fall apart. So spend time really honing in what your message is and then how to match that with your visual presentation, with the color grade, with the aspect ratio. I know it can be pretty cliche sometimes to drop the bars on top, uh, but it does give you that feeling, right? It gives you that feeling of cinema. It gives you that feeling of something a little bit more filmic 
for lack of a better term, or the aspect ratios that are a little bit more four by five with the box. Uh, it, it feels retro. It feels genuine. It feels authentic. It could feel shaky with the handheld. All of these things play a role with the emotion that you're going to get across visually. And so while you're color grading, while you're choosing the aspect ratio, while you're choosing all these shots visually, just try to be very intentional on how they're gluing together and how they feel, right? A warm grade for, versus a cold grade. Cold cold grade. Uh, you get the point. It's just really important to think these things through. For me, I use my, uh, my travel luck collection. Shameless plug, screw me. Uh, if you're interested, they're always down below. But to find your style will be really, really important to find something that really fits with you um, and just lining up the visual with the next step, which is the auditory component of your film. Do you hear it too? That moment that keeps calling you. You see, you can try to ignore it, but it will only get louder and louder and louder and it will never stop until you find it. Now, the audio, the sound, this is what immerses people. And I think it's something that a lot of people take for granted. It's what takes just a bunch of random images and brings you in and makes it feel like something tangible, like something real. And whether you're using sound effects like hits, risers, and hushes, uh, <laughs> or you're using the raw audio that you captured out of your camera, it's just really important to just not neglect this portion of your film and give it the same amount of time as you would with your shot selection, because I think a lot of people just tend to ignore that. Now for me, a huge part of the audio component is obviously gonna be music. I cannot understate how important it is for my films to have the most powerful music. For me, I always sit down, I put on my headphones, and I listen countless hours to music over and over, drink a cup of coffee, and wait till something just moves me. Right, I have this huge collection and art list that I have saved of uh, songs that I really like that really move me. And then I start writing down my script because in almost all of my films and, and the same thing with the ending to The Arrival, it has this voiceover. And for me, a voiceover is such a simple, powerful way to connect with your audience that feels human and feels real and creates something that feels like a film. Uh, and I've worked for years on my voiceovers. I'm gonna give you a few voiceover tips and tricks right here, but for me, that auditory component, right? Once you nail the music, which is so important to find something that you genuinely feel. Uh, I'm hot right now, so <laughs> I'm gonna take this off. Uh, something that you genuinely feel and then sound effects that can enhance that, right? That's gonna be 1A and 1B for me is creating a voiceover that really feels genuine, really feels powerful, authentic. It can be mysterious, it can be friendly, it can be whatever you want it to be, but just sit down and make sure this voiceover fits seamlessly into the music. Now I do it a lot with my films where I sit down, <laughs> this is a real story, um, I find the song and I mumble what I'm trying to say, right? I don't know exactly what I'm gonna say, but it's so important for your voiceovers to fit into your music that you choose as if it was a part of the song. So I'll sit down, I'll bust out my notes app and I'll just go And I know it looks stupid and it might sound stupid in the first version, but you get that pacing and that cadence and that tone. And I heard somewhere, I'm gonna butcher this, but like 90% of something that you say is how you say it, and not what you say. So really focus on your cadence, your tone, and your delivery of the voiceover fitting into your film, and it just makes for it to be so much more impactful. Memory is a strange thing. It doesn't work like I thought it did. So when it comes down to your message, obviously we've heard story is king, but for these kind of filmic videos and a lot of the videos that I do, they don't necessarily have like a narrative story, if you will. They don't have like a, you know, a rise in action and a climax um, and a, whatever the, the fuck the rest of film school taught. I didn't go to film school, uh, but you get the idea. My films aren't like narratives. Uh, and a lot of times I just want to create this like sense of mystery, sense of wonder uh, in, in my voiceovers. And so when I'm writing, I'm trying to find a song that really brings that emotion out. And then I want to match that level of power 
with my voiceover. Because if you have a really powerful song and your voiceover falls flat, it just doesn't quite hit. And apparently, I've never been on live television before. I've never, ever been on live television. And I think this is where a lot of people screw up when it comes to taking a video and turning it into a film that gives you that emotion is you're afraid to write something poetic or write something powerful or write something, you know, that really resonates with you because, you know, and I've gone through this time and time again. It feels stupid. It feels dumb. You sit down, you write it and you're like, why am I doing this? I feel like a complete idiot. But for me to actually get that powerful Hollywood feeling in my, my, uh, audience, I have to realize you have to go past that. You have to sit down and write something that resonates with you and you'll know when it does. You won't have to fake it because you'll hear it with the song, you'll fit it in and you'll just be moved. At the end of my films, if I'm not like genuinely in tears watching the films that I'm making, I know I can step back and be like, all right, how can I be this moved by my film? And if you're that moved by your film, your audience will be moved by your film. So when you're writing, Try your best, it's gonna be hard, but to block out all that noise of how stupid it is and lean into the cringy, lean into the cliche, lean into the over the top, because I think the one thing that Hollywood films have that most YouTube videos don't is, besides money and actors <laughs> and access to resources and all that other shit, uh, but the big thing is they, ha they have this sense of wonder and unapologetic, just like s powerful stories to them. And with our own videos, I feel like we tend to think they're not cool enough or not uh, exciting enough to actually have that powerful storyline or that powerful message when we're writing. So you have to lean into the corniness. You have to lean into the cliche-ness. You have to lean into the over-the-top nature of it to really get something that's going to move someone. Um, because I know some of my videos, some of my voiceovers have been corny as fuck, so cliche. But at the end of the day, if I really want to get to a point where I'm moving millions of people and inspiring you sitting down right now to make something, I have to be passionate about this. I have to be, it has to be real. I can't be bullshitting. Uh, and I hope you would see that same enthusiasm that I have about my films, whether I'm talking to a camera or actually making it. So try, it's going to come with time, but that story message is something you can't fake. And when you put it all together, it's something truly, truly magical. And, and it's something that could take your video into a true, Hollywood-esque type film. So I hope you learned a little bit. I'm trying to do some more of these where you can actually tap into my mind and I can teach you guys a little bit more about making a film that just resonates with people and that feels real and feels authentic, but also feels powerful and inspires people because at the end of the day, that's what I want to do. Um, oh God, I'm choking up. I always do that. Um, <laughs> this video is sponsored by Artlist, like I said at the beginning. I genuinely believe they have the most powerful emotional music that you can possibly put into your films. And on top of their music, they have assets, sound effects. It really is a one-stop shop for any creator and their needs. So if you want an Artlist subscription, you can always click the link down below and get two months extra for free. It helps me out a ton and you can step up your creating game. However, we're not here to talk about the Artlist catalog. We're here to talk about the Artlist 100K fund. I talked in a past video about how they are giving one creator or creators $100,000 to make their dream film come to life. And Artlist has announced the winner over on their channel and I helped them do that. And without giving away too much, I can genuinely say that the winner's pitch was one of the craziest ideas that I have ever heard. They're planning on doing something that has never been done in human history. So click the link down below and make sure you go watch that video and go to Artless channel. Make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be very involved in their channel over the next year. So I would love if you checked it out. So thank you. I don't know how long this was, but I appreciate you sticking along to the end. Comment, uh, let's get cinematic if you did make it to the end. I appreciate you guys. I'm having a film festival February 24th here in LA. If you want to come, I'll tell you all about that later on, but just save the date in the meantime. And uh, yeah, I love you. Stay creamy. Let's get cinematic. Bye.